Okay, thank you so much, Ken, for joining again. And today we're going to talk about the movie Spanglish. Yeah, thanks for just me introducing me to that. Um, interesting, because, I mean, obviously, for a lot of people, Spanglish is quite an unusual name for film. As I understand, this comes from the mix of Spanish and English as two languages which are mixed together, probably more in the case of um, North America in terms of the areas which have large indigenous, well, Spanish speaking communities, but where you know, probably bilingual and mix the two languages together. So you have this hybrid, partially English, partially Spanish language, which appears to have no real grammar. Yes. And no real sense, but it just works. It works as a mix of the two languages can put together. But the film itself is, it's about a mother and her child who get into America um, economy class, as it were. So they illegally get into America. Because this admissions essay is open record, let me just say that our transportation into the United States was economy class. Find themselves or get to one of their relatives and they live in a very Hispanic neighborhood. As a consequence, there is no need to learn English. So for several years, they're in this Spanish community, but at some particular point, the mother has to find a job, has to get a better job, a better paying job. And uh, she has an interview with a family to be like a family nanny, somebody to help cook, look after the children. It's a very affluent family. Um, and she has to take one of her relatives along who has to translate. Um, so the, 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 she gets the job as a result, I think, of her friend smashing into a glass window and uh, the mother of the, the, the host family being really upset and offering her money yeah. as a way of, of, it's just like, money will solve the problem. But anyway, at floor, our lady, our, our main protagonist gets the job and she starts looking after this family um, of a little boy and a little girl. The little girl, sorry, the little boy is rarely seen. He's, he's part of the film. Oh, he's, really, he's, he's very rarely seen. He just kind of comes into odd scenes. But uh, the, the little girl, the daughter, um, who is called uh, Bernice, is a little overweight. She's a little gawky. She's got uh, teeth braces and what have you. And the mum is very image conscious. She's very, she has these aspirations and she's also got, I think, some severe issues in terms of her own perception of herself. Um, and she's very domineering, very, very domineering. So there's a point at which Flawed, our main protagonist, um, is asked to be a live-in nanny, a live-in sort of home help when they when this 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 family take um, a holiday home next to the beach. At which point she has to admit that she has a daughter. Um, I'm going to go slightly back because obviously Floor doesn't actually speak any English or speaks very little English. So this whole the the, the whole form of communication with the family is really simple, very very simple. So she has to, they, they, they go to this holiday home, Flora's asked to stay with the family during three months. And she has to admit that she has a daughter. The daughter is invited along, can stay at the beach house for the three months. Um, but um, Flora is invited to the holiday home, which the family have taken for three months. Um, Deborah, uh, the, 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 the mother, the wife of John, Adam Sandler's, uh, the, the part Adam Sandler takes, mm -hmm. is ask, he, she invites Flo to stay, or basically she doesn't invite, she, she basically forces Flo to stay because if Flo doesn't stay, Flo will use the, lose her job and Flo doesn't want to do that. She wants to better her life and better the life of her child. So she reluctantly accepts the situation brings in her own daughter, uh, Christina, uh, who's super pretty, super cute, very intelligent. She's everything that Deborah wants in her own daughter, but doesn't have in her own daughter. And um, as a consequence, Deborah, her manipulative sort of self takes over. So she takes, she takes um, Christina out for the day without Flo's permission. And this, 
that starts, as I see, the, the story of why and how Flo has to start to learn English and actually adapt to this new culture that she's been sort of living in, mm-hmm. but outside of. So the, the, the story kind of starts there for me where Flo is in a situation where to protect her own daughter and to really um, to be able to deal with Deborah as a very domineering person, she has to start to learn English. There's a lot more to this film than meets the eye. It's a lot more complicated than a lot of the films we've looked at. I think it's probably going to be a little more difficult for people to follow because it, it, it's fast, it is faster paced. It's not a sort of a 30s or 40s or a 50s film or, or like uh, Greece, which again was a slow, easily paced film. This is a, it's got a lot more pace. There's a little more depth in the characters. There's more depth in the storyline. It's not as simple as everything else we've, we've, um, we've seen, but obviously the need for Flo to learn a language is very apt for everybody here who's, right, who's probably looking at it for this reason because you know we're all learning a language we're all and we're all going to see how useful it is to have that second that third or the fourth language so i mean for me the story kind of starts there with this need to learn a language to defend herself and to what also to to prevent deborah from taking total control because at this particular point because she doesn't uh, dominate the English language. She has no real understanding of the English. She is, she's at a big disadvantage. She can't put her foot down and say no. She really can't put her foot down. She's having to write letters and get her daughter to translate these letters. Um, there is a love element as well. Where is there a love element in the film? Right, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I think it's obligatory to have this love element but I think the thing that I was looking at initially was this overly domineering woman Flo's need to basically counteract this learn English so that she can put a foot down and say no enough is enough she's my daughter stop taking control of my daughter stop taking her out uh, Deborah is is she sees she sees Christina as almost like a surrogate daughter, the daughter she doesn't have. Right. So, I mean, I mean, I mean, when, when, when she first saw Christina, she's like, oh, you could get paid a fortune to be a, to be a surrogate um, mother. mother. Yeah, yeah. And then the daughter was just, she didn't even understand what that meant. The reason that I had kind of thought to watch this is the whole language learning type of um, yeah. um, element to it. I hadn't remembered the complexity of this particular movie. But one thing I'll have people say to me is like, oh, I have a cousin that moved to the States and they didn't have to learn English. Um, And that is true. Like you saw Flora, she came unconventionally. She came, you know, (laughs) illegally, right? Over the border, (laughs) like crossing, running. And I have a friend from high school that that's what they did. They ran over the border. Um, But she moved to a place like the daughter mentions like, oh, she had, we went past Texas. That is like, you know, 26% or something like that, Hispanic. And we went, we went to, we went to Los Angeles, which was like 46% Hispanic. And there she lived and was able to get jobs. And probably there's like Hispanic markets and neighborhoods. And she didn't have to learn language. Of course, Christina did because going into the American school system, she obviously would. Uh, But that's kind of why I picked it. But you're right. It has a lot of levels and it's more faster paced and, and that for people watching. But I like the element of the language learning and kind of that whole story of it too. Yeah, um, obviously, and again, the thing is with films anyway, they compress things. So, flaw. If you if you watch the film very um, in a very simple kind of way, she seems to learn English in three months, which is very doable, very very doable. But you know, she comes. She's very much working up very very late, two a, two a.m. in the morning learning, watching these videos, because it was all videos. And- several. Again. Several. several. Good. Several. Demasiadas. Too many. Too, Too many. many. Right. Stuff like that. So she's like repeating and listening and repeating, which is a great way to learn the language by listening to it. Yeah, it's just totally immersion, just constantly listening to the audio cassettes and just immersing yourself in the language learning. Um, it's and that, that because there is this there is this brilliant scene where um, the Christina has been collecting these pieces of washed up glass, sea glass, mm-hmm. uh, because Adam Sandler, John, has 
promised to give money to, to his children and also to, to Christina if they collect it. And she's out at night collecting this glass. And eventually she, she collects enough glass so that Adam Sandler has to pay her, John has to pay her, I don't know, it's like $500 or something. And he does pay her and he, he leaves the envelope. And um, Flora is incensed with this because, again, it's this, it's this family taking control of her daughter. And there's this brilliant scene where Christina is, is translating for a mother and she's going through all these actions. So all the motions too. By some little apology, I would be a fool to bring it up. Pero necesito que sepa lo que but I need to say, no matter what the result, y si tengo que ser grosera, pues ser I need to be impolite. No se meta con los hijos de las otras personas. You leave someone else's child Pero alone. Que no es difícil de All these motions, and she's, 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 she's basically, she's absolutely mimicking her mother in terms of the anger, venting the anger and the frustration. It's a beautiful scene, I mean, beautifully put together. But you also sort of realize at that particular point that Floor and John, I think it's probably a little before that as well, but Floor and John have got this thing. There's, a, there's this twinkle between the pair of them, partially because Floor sees John as a, as a much better mother than the mother in terms of he's much more attuned to his children and certainly much more attuned to, um, to, to Beatrice, who is a child who's, who, who's suffering under the oppression of her mother. You know, her mother has these ideas of how perfect she should be. But um, the, the, this collecting of the glass and this, this, this situation where Christina then has to translate absolutely everything and just vent her anger. And this is this particular point that she realizes going up the stairs that, you know, she has to learn English. She has to, she has to dominate this language so she can control the situation. She's just not put upon by, by the family, not so much by John Adam Sandler, but by, by, um, by Deborah, who really is, I'm going to say, I'm not going to say manipulative, but She's, she's got those elements of just wanting to control and control and control mm -hmm. and be in charge. I mean, it, yeah, there's, 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 the, there's the bedroom scene with, with John and it's about her just controlling, 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 and then not feeling satisfied because she hasn't fulfilled. And it's just like, it's a, it's a very odd scene and you kind of think, yeah. you know, it is a bit of an odd one, but um, yeah, it's, it, it at that particular point, you suddenly do realise there is this twinkle of a relationship as Flo absolutely understands that he is a much better mother than the mother. So if I can use the word mother, I'm going yeah, to use was, the word mother because, yeah, he's, he's much more in tune with his kids. There was a quote about the, the um, how the machismoism that, that is very much in Latin America, and he was yeah. not, he was definitely not, didn't have that machismoism. He appeared to be a good man, but to someone with first-hand knowledge of Latin macho, he seemed to have the emotions of a Mexican woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the, the little se sequence in the car where Flo doesn't understand him at all. She's, I think she's driving it out to the bus stop. He's crying um, and he's actually using the seatbelt to wipe his tears. <laughs> he doesn't understand like, yeah. why he's acting like a, like a woman. Basically, <laughs> yeah, he's much more in tune with himself and with his kids and everything else. The, 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 the whole point, I think, of the film is about this need when you move to another country. Uh, if you are going to interact with natives, you, you're certainly going to have to learn the language. You're certainly going to have to learn, well, not just the language, I think just culture as well, because there are, you know, talking about that machismo, it's, it's about the cultural differences between one country and another country. Uh, and I think, you know, it, it, again, this film, because it has more layers, touches upon those things in different kind of ways. Um, it's, I mean, there are other protagonists within the film. Uh, the little old lady who is the mother of um, Deborah. I, it's lovely. I really, I thought she's a great character. She's an alcoholic. Alcoholic, was, a former jazz singer. A good time girl. Oh, there's a lovely scene where she just literally pours this bottle of wine. It's this, like this, this huge glass. <laughs> a woman after my own heart. And, uh, uh, Deborah says, hey, Mom, it's not even it's not even midday in the clock goes and it, tick. Mom, it's not even noon. Well it <laughs> Okay, now it is. 
<laughs> no, it is. I mean, what's what's your take? I mean, how do you? What's your take on on flawed? And I mean, is it the same as mine? When I watched it, like the first time, I'm like, oh, why wouldn't she want to move in this beautiful house by the beach? Why with her daughter? And like, but I I saw after watching that it was all about protecting and keeping those boundaries that she knew moving into this house with this this upper class family would cause like you know, problems with boundaries with her daughter and she wanted to protect her daughter and, and I think kind of keep her um, the same, like keep her in the same culture and all that. So kind of bringing her into that family was going to expose her to this madness of the mother, but also expose to all of the elements of this this um, family and stuff. So she, she kept that, that those barriers of, and that was her hesitation of actually moving in with her daughter. You know, when she actually did, it immediately went where they where Deborah took her out like it was super early in the morning Flora was still asleep and and she wrote a note to her mother in English which she must have known yeah. her mother could not read it and yeah. said I'll be back in a few hours and she went out to I guess the flea markets and the shops with the mother um with Deborah and the when Flora woke up she had to use the Spanish English dictionary yes. to to translate this and figure out what happened and she was so upset um, so you could see this whole kind of manipulation from Deborah over the daughter and the daughter kind of like changing and starting to almost disrespect her mother, which is totally not acceptable in Latin, Latin American culture. You do not disrespect your mother. Okay. Um, and as soon as she walks in the door and she's got, she's got her, her nice, um, her hair is like very dark color, but she's got these pink highlights and the mother's like upstairs right now. Christina, tell your mother that those wash right out. It's no big deal. Not right now. I'd wet them. Um, so I, I see it as like this layers of of um, the cultural differences, the layers of social economic differences, and and all of that. So there's lots of layers to this um, to this story altogether for sure. And Flora is being almost like that that anchor to this family, this this family that has all these like. Um, you know, problems to it, that she comes in here and she's almost this anchor. Yeah, she's, she's the same point around most of it because she, she, helps, um, she helps Bernice in terms of feeling like she's a real person because she, she, Deborah buys her a load of clothing, which is a size too small, if not two sizes too small, uh, and floor to make uh, Bernice feel better. She alters the clothing. Mm -hmm. um, just because her mum, Deborah just really doesn't get this thing. She just doesn't get the, she doesn't get a daughter. She's just not in tune, where obviously John Adam Sandler is in tune. Uh, so Flo adjusts the, the clothing uh, and she makes, she makes Bernice just feel, uh, not special, but she just makes her feel like she's worth something, which she's not getting from her own mother. And then I think the whole thing about, I think there was, like you said, this inkling between her and Adam Sandler, the father, John, um, when they do finally kind of get together, they have one kiss, but then she says, there's just some things you cannot risk, some, some things you cannot risk when you have mm -hmm. children. So obviously there's no chance of them having a relationship because she's not willing to risk that for her daughter. Uh, is, it, is that in the, uh, the restaurant? Because obviously restaurant. Adam Sandler, John, yeah, he's a he's a he's a he's a fantastic chef. Full, I'm assuming it's like a four star Michelin chef. He gets a he gets awarded this uh, this this four stars, and he runs this restaurant, which is obviously a, a very stressful kind of job. Um, but he takes floor after after his wife has confessed to him that she's been having a relationship. He picks, he takes floor because he's going to take her back to the bus stops, but he takes her back to his restaurant and cooks her a fantastic meal and gives floor this, this, this night to remember. But at this particular point also, their kind of, their kind of feelings towards each other are right on that tipping point of, of exploding into a full relationship. And they, they just hold back. There's just this hold back, but you can see that they're much more in tune with each other as people. Then John is with Deborah. Yeah, I think he seems to have maybe not fallen out of love with Deborah, but he seems to have parted in terms of how well they get on. 
and what their aims and their goals are in life. But yeah, it's a lovely scene in the restaurant where she's eating. She says something to the effect that I'm never going to forget this in my life. And she's eating with her fingers. She's eating the uh, asparagus and what have you. Just thoroughly enjoying this. I'm going to remember every taste forever. A situation which you're probably never going to have in her life being having been cooked for by a chef of a four-star hotel, sorry, a four-star restaurant, and him cooking personally for her, and them having this romantic kind of meal. Again, she's just reached the epitome of, you know, the, the height. She's, she's never probably ever going to achieve anything better. And not only that, there is this, this connection, this, this real romantic connection between the pair of them which as you said can't go any further because they both have families and to to break that up to to break up the families would be again culturally a problem for for floor i think as i see right. it i mean maybe even so much- awkward so so like if they were to kind of get together their daughters are kind of friends and like it would be like this like they just can't um yeah. and at one point he's yeah. about to pour her a drink and him a drink and he said I'm not going to drink, and I don't think you should either. We both need to stay clear-headed because you knew the minute you add some alcohol to this, it's going to, you know, it's going to go to the point of no return. Like we're going to do something that we're going to regret and that we can't take that chance of doing. It wasn't just a touch; it was about that much of vodka. I think <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, was, hey, it was going for a big time. Abs- yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And just the bit, you know, where they sat on the, on the sofa, and she just she's just putting her feet on the ground and just. To, well, trying to get away from things, realizing she has to walk away, and I think that's shown by the fact her feet are just hovering, and eventually she has to make that move. She has to go. No, I have to get out of this because although I want to be here, I want a relationship with this guy who she, I think she, she, you know, she sees as somebody who's really in touch with himself and very unlike her, the, the Latin guys, the the Mexican guys. She just can't. She just can't step over that that bridge and go and break up his family and also just give those problems, as you say, with, with her own daughter and the relationship that she has with, with the family. Yeah, um, some, some nice elements running through that. I mean, obviously, there are other bits and pieces. Obviously, Deborah has had a relationship with, I believe it's the, the estate agent. Mm-hmm. or The real estate agent. Real, yeah, Rialta, estate agent for me, who's shown them this summer home. Um, and Deborah just, you know, she says, I want to explain everything. I want to explain everything. Ask me any questions. And John just goes, did you sleep with him? And that's the only thing he wants to know. But when Deborah believes that John has slept or potentially done something with Flor, it's only her mother who holds back, who holds her back and just says, you know, there's only one thing you've got to ask. There's only one thing you've got to say welcome back or something very similar to that you know don't ask any questions don't pry you are the person who's who's been unfaithful don't start asking your your husband these questions because you don't have a right the mum's great there's that lovely scene where deborah's just about to leave in the car and they have this 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 kind of little bit in the uh where they just the mum's outside and she's just chatting through the car window about what she's about to do and why she shouldn't be doing it. There's, again, a lovely scene. Do not act. Quickly. You will soon cement an awful fate for yourself, a life with no hope of, of repair, which has already begun to turn desperate and dumb. And the, the, the old lady doesn't come into the film a lot, but when she does come in, she's, she's wading in heavy with the punches. I mean, she's saying some quite important things. You know, um, the things she, do, she does say are certainly, um, in terms of relationships, they're quite strong kind of points. And she's the one person who's got a very level head, despite mm-hmm. the fact she's a complete drunkard. Or I think yeah. in this particular, she's actually not had a drink in two weeks. Yeah, she has she's it a- and no one noticed because she, she <laughs> no. I must have held myself up pretty well as a drunk. <laughs> yeah. I have to say the same thing about myself. I think that's why I love this lady because she's just, so, what lovely! I mean, I mean, you could tell in her in her youth she was stunning because she was beautiful, and uh, she must have been uh, sort of seventy year old when she made this film. And she was just an amazing looking lady at seventy, and the part she plays is just fantastic. Um, certainly one of my favourite characters. I mean, 
they're all great characters, but I just love the old lady. I just, yes, you know, I was she, just, she was one uh, of them, sure. By, by her. I mean, I think if we get to the end of the film, um, there's just a little bit where they, they leave each other. And um, Adam John uh, John says to Floor, you're going to be a lucky catch. Yeah, whoever so, gets you, you're going to be a lucky catch. And, um, you're going to be a lucky catch. Yeah. And her, her party line to him is mi amor. Yes, my yeah, love. In Spanish, she just might me and more. She just leaves and leaves. You just realize, you know, that love they have for each. There is that they, they, they're in love with each other, but they just can't. They can't. They just exactly. can't. And, you know, so, yeah, a, a fantastic film, a, a really good choice. And like I say, um, definitely, definitely a deeper and more complex film than the ones we've watched so far. And I think. Um, that, like I said, I, you know, coming back, going back to what I was saying earlier, I think that might cause some people more issues. Uh, but I think a great choice, simply because of the language learning being being a big part of what this film is about. It's about the language learning. So I think, you know, a brilliant choice of films. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. And it was actually my choice. So I think next film will be your choice. So I wonder if you have some idea of what we might watch. Um, yeah. Um, not so much language learning. Um, but about learning to speak in public, the King's Speech. The King, oh, with Colin Firth, right? Yeah, King's Speech. Yeah, um, I love that one. I haven't I mean, seen it, it in a long time. It, it, so it's not, it's not language learning per se, but it's about the, the need for our, our, our king in that particular area who couldn't speak in public, who had a speech impediment, who had real problems. So sort of linked to speech. Right. Um, it's a few years since I've seen the film. I went to the cinema to watch it and... Um, really enjoyed it and actually had the pleasure um, a few months after seeing the film of actually being able to go to a couple of the locations to film something completely different so something I could quite relate to but I, I think from what I remember it's a very clear film in terms of the speech generally the clarity of the speech and the quality of the speech so I'm hoping that um, <clears throat> those watching who are learners of English will not have too many problems with it so I'm hoping that it's, it, it, it satisfies two things. It satisfies our need to, the, the language learning or the, lead, the, the, the need to speak clearly, unlike myself, who's having problems using their mouth and their brain at the same time, speaking clearly in public or on the radio at that particular point. And also um, just something which is clear, concise and easy for the viewer, easy for the people watching these chats between ourselves to kind of be able to watch this film and go, yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed that. I didn't need to put the subtitles on. Fingers crossed. Let's yes, see. Absolutely. All right. I'm looking forward to that. And I'm looking forward to our next conversation. <laughs>